Okay, guys. Um, it's Friday, the twenty second. We're gonna try feeding some arboreals. Uh, most of these are gonna be avic species. Um, this little guy uh, suspected avicularia metallica sling, two avicularia avicularias, um, <clears throat> an avicularia metallica male, two Samulpeus reduncus, avicularia rufa. And we'll see what else from there, if anything. There we go. I knew she would be hungry. That's a little bit better with the light. I'm trying to figure out where to put this. Just a tad bit better. <clears throat> okay, well that's one. That's the um, what appears to be a Vicularia metallica sling. We'll know a little bit more as it grows a little bit and gets out of that brown in the abdomen. We'll see what the coloring of the setae, but the setae looks all white to me right now on the legs and uh, of the carapace. So I'm um, thinking it's the morph type six, but I can't guarantee that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, let's move on to the two, these are the two new Avix that I got a couple weeks ago. Neither one of them I've tried feeding yet. We're going to give them a shot and see. <clears throat> um, one may eat, the other one I'm not so sure about. Okay, so this is the smaller of the two. Um, this one I named Boa, um, and the other one's named Scarlet. My friend uh, Jay Boa, uh, he helped name Scarlet, so I figured I'd name the other one Boa just because I thought it was just the right thing to do but anyway here's the little dude let's see if we can get this one to eat I'm not very confident in either one of these two eating to be honest with you but don't crawl out but you can eat that there you go all right, so two for two so far. Now you can see the same similar uh, abdominal pattern as best as you can here. I'm not sure how this is going to come out because of how close we are with the light and the camera. Um, and I don't have the microphone on. So I hopefully you're hearing me. Okay, I'm sure you can without the microphone, but we'll plug it in for the next one and see what the difference is. Um, but the patterning is pretty much the same but this one has a different coloring sete it almost looks more a little bit reddish than the white that's on the other one but who knows after it molts what it'll look like so we're gonna we're gonna open up boa or uh scarlet and see i don't think that one's gonna eat because i really think that one's in pre-molt but we'll find out so this is boa's enclosure and there is or sorry scarlet boa was the last one uh, you could see the abdomen size is is, a, is pretty decent. So we're not going to feed this one because I'm pretty sure that this one may molt soon. Um, I'm just going to throw some water in there for it, um, along with the other two, and put these guys back on the shelves, and then try and set up um, shots to do the uh, Vicularia Metallica male. We're going to throw a cricket in there and see if we can't get that one to hunt. Um, I'm not guaranteeing anything, so we're going to have to reset up all the lighting and everything for that one. Uh, and then we'll try the two Samulpeus reduncus or the Avicularia rufa after that and uh, go from there. Okay, again, this isn't going to be the uh, greatest shots because of where he's at again. He was in the front where we could see him perfectly, but he went back into his little burrow, hollow den there. Um, he spends most of his time actually from here to here um, he will go out front but he's never up top on the leaf at all and he doesn't crawl around the top he's generally more towards the bottom this spider is so um, again I tried feeding this one twice since it's molted he hasn't taken anything yet but I've never tried a cricket so we're gonna give that a shot and see if he might actually finally eat for me I kind of scared him as expected crickets right here He's very timid. He's 
extremely timid, actually. I just, I'd like, I really would like to see him eat. He molted a few weeks back. The cricket's just going to sit there. I said it's it's difficult to uh, to film through these mainstays. They're they're good enclosures. They're not the greatest to film through, especially when they web along the outsides like they do. Of course, that takes the clear plastic to opaque. Uh, it's not going to be much different in the acrylic enclosures, either. Um, but they're going to be a little bit bigger, so there'll be a little bit more room for these guys to uh, move around, and hopefully, we'll be able to catch shots of them out away from their webbing area and that cricket's going to move up that's not what we want we want the cricket to move down so he's like making zero move towards it so well well i'm just going to stick him off to the side we're going to grab the avicularia rufa and then do the two simulpaeus reduncus and figure out if we're going to go uh, any further, I don't think there's any more arboreals that need to be fed. I'm um, trying to stick with the arboreals in this one. The Erminio's fed, the Maculata's been fed, the Polkers have been fed, uh, the Pokies have been fed. I think the last two are the, the Reduncus and the last three, the Reduncus and the Rufa. Oh, we got, we'll throw the praying mantises in on this one, too. We'll do that. We'll throw the praying mantises in here. Uh, we'll film those, too. And then we'll upload this video today. And tonight, I'll shoot another video of a handful of terrestrials and the um, new home of the Brachypalma homori. Hopefully, I can get that done. Remember when I said that we were pretty much done Christmas shopping? Until I woke up and I have a list about a mile long of stuff I need to go get today. So, uh, yeah, uh... I'm going to get this done and upload it so I can take off and do what I need to do and uh, go from there. So let's get these other ones down. Okay, so here is the home of the Avicularia rufa female. And you can see the elaborate tunnel starts from here. It goes all the way down and wraps all the way down to the bottom. This spider is on the bottom 95% of its time. It's generally in this corner or right now it's over here where it's really got hiding spots um it's, it's a really good eater so i'm hoping i can get these crickets placed properly i'm throwing two of them in there i'm going to try and get them i don't know if you can see my finger right in this area and hopefully they'll go down into the webbing and to the spider hopefully she'll feel it and come out over here and pick them off. This is one of the handful of teas that uh, will eat stuff much bigger. There you go. <laughs> much bigger than herself. Um, and she just got the one. I don't even know where the other cricket went to. But trust me, she'll find it. Uh, she's a voracious eater, probably the best eating avicularia species I've ever had. Uh, that little baby metallic is pretty good, and my female metallic is not bad either. Oh, here's that other cricket. Where I can see it. Where is it? I could see it on the film, but I can't see it in, in the enclosure. Isn't that weird? Oh, there it is. Oh, she got it. See? <clears throat> I told you she'd get them both. Yeah, she's a peach, this one. They're quick. You see how fast she moved from back there to here, and you heard that noise. But, but yeah, I'd love for her to come out so you guys can actually see her. And you're not going to be able to see her as good as I can. She's uh, definitely a female. 
This is a species I'd love to breed. It's just finding males are really, really difficult. Matter of fact, the only person that I know that's had them is Steve Johnson, has, has one or two, I think, and I think Chase Campbell has one. Other than that, I have not seen males of this species, uh, available anyway. Now, she's nowhere near ready. She's still got a, a year or two before she's ready, but it'd be nice to have a, you know, a small juvenile sexed male right now to grow with her. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Hopefully next year we'll get the Avicularia Metallica's bred. That'll mature him out, and I'd like for her to pop at least one molt, maybe two, before uh, he matures would be would probably be perfect. He's just a touch. Now, uh, they're pretty close to the same size. He, he may be just a just a scotch bigger, or scotch, scotch bigger. Okay, let's get the two Reduncus down, and we'll and the the two uh, praying mantises. Okay, this is the suspected male, Samuelpaeus Reduncus. This is Tesla. You can see him down on the bottom there. I'm hoping that he'll come out over here and grab this cricket. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. The one good thing about filming this way um, through the side is I can just put the prey item in there, let it go, and close the lid and just kind of sit back. This one's much more active and out than uh, Tehar, which is the suspected female. She has a cork tube that she spends her time in. Um, and honestly, uh, Semelpaeus are known to be quote-unquote arboreal spiders. But what I found, just, just in keeping the four species that I have, the only ones that I really believe live most of the time up high are the pulkers. Um, they are at the top, generally, of their enclosure most of the time, 95% of the time, where the Reduncus are down low, buried, the Armenia is hit or miss, and the Cambridge Eye is, is also hit or miss. Um, if you watch a lot of videos where people have Cambridge Eyes, they're buried down in a corner somewhere, and that's where they spend their time. And then they shoot up out like, like sharks to grab their prey. Uh, and that's the same thing with Armenias. Armenias are so explosive. That's what makes them so uh, interesting to keep. And I've heard a lot of people, and I, and I once believed this myself, that people that keep old world tarantulas, or new world tarantulas, and want to step into pokies, everybody says, well, you should get Samuelpaeus first. And because, you know, Samuelpaeus is going to be your step to the pokies. And I tell you what, the pokies that I have, I've never had any of them shoot out of their area to grab prey like the Armenias do. Um... I think they're one of the most voracious eaters, the most explosive, unpredictable tarantulas that I own, really. I mean, you know, the OBTs are the OBTs, but they're just, they, you just don't know when they can, they can clock out. I expect it with the Armenia. You know, I expect that Armenia to go from zero to a hundred like that, you know, just a snap of, of my fingers. Um, I don't really do that with the pokies. I, I, I honestly, God, I don't. They're quick, they move quick, but they're hiders. And they'll wait for the prey to come to them. You've seen my Sofusca. You know, she sits and waits, and then the thing walks by her and she kills it. I, I've never seen them come up. I've tried tong feeding a few of them. I mean, I tong fed my last male, Rufalata, a lot because he was so calm until he missed the prey and came up over top of... I mean, he was up the tongs and on my arm faster than I could even blink my eye. But again, I was shoving prey in his face with the armenia i drop something in and it's flying out of its tube you know to to get to get to it and, and of course it missed it on the last one it didn't come out of the enclosure but it missed the prey and almost came out of the enclosure so let's uh see if i can't manipulate the old mr cricket to get a little bit closer to where tesla might feel it Yeah, 
Of course not. I'm going to go where you want to go. Well, we're going to let that go, and uh, we'll let Tesla do its thing, and we'll try feeding Tehar. Um, Tehar will be a little bit easier because I'll just put it on top of the cork bark, and it's going to probably come right out and grab it. So I'm going to try and catch this cricket and try tong feeding Tehar. Or not at all. She doesn't seem to be wanting it. Possibly she's in pre-molt. Alrighty then. No, I'm not going to force her. She doesn't come out for that. That's I mean that's right over top of her nose. Right, she's down on the bottom there. I'm going to assume that we're in pre-molt, so let's uh, get the praying mantises down, get some wax worms for them, and uh, finish up with those two. You'll be able to see the how big the female got, um, trying to figure out what I want to put her in. And we'll start with the little male, I'll feed him first, so we'll finish up with the big female. Um, we'll try to get the best shots I possibly can with them. I seem to to miss with the lighting with them and the focus um, more than I get it right. So let's get those two down. I'm going to put these guys off to the side so that I can water them before I put them up on the shelves and uh, we'll end this puppy. And I can go do my errands, come back and do the other stuff I need to do. Okay, so here's the little male. Um, he molted once, she's molted twice, and she's got her wings, so she's... She's mature. Let's dig up a nice little. They love these wax worms. You missed. There we go. See, it, it seems. I don't even know, really, to be honest with you. I think the color of these is what makes it so that it doesn't seem like I'm picking them up on the camera very good. See how they, I feel bad for, well, maybe I don't. I mean, I do kind of maybe feel a little bad for what they eat because they just rip it apart. And the speed at which they, you know, eliminate the prey, I mean, just, just rip it to shreds. It's, it's amazing how fast they actually will kill this thing and, and devour it. You could see how, on the femurs there, you see how brown they are. I didn't really notice that before, and I'm not sure if that's normal. I'd have to go back and look at some of the pictures and see. I think it is for this species. And this is the Iridula membranacea, the uh, giant Asian manis. I'd have to see the little differences of what the differences are between these and the um, Chinese manises because they're they're pretty close and, and size wise I think that they um, I'm, I'm not sure I think Chinese manis might be might be a tad bit bigger than these guys are right my female that I had that laid the Uthika she was pretty big so he's actually doing a nice little nice little dance so I'm going to pause you guys here, get him in the middle of his lid and put him back in. And uh, I think he feels the, the heaters on. I think he feels the air. Because he's actually not eating the waxworm right now. He's just kind of dancing around. So maybe I'll get him out of this air and get the other one out. Okay, and here's what I'm talking about. You see how the light is reflecting off her face. I can't get the light anywhere else to even remotely not reflect off her, but the male seems to be okay. Now you see her legs are more pinkish, not quite brown, 
and if you'll see if she turns um, you'll see her wings uh, I'll, I'll show you that stuff as soon as we get her actually munching on this wax worm now that was my tongs right there right there and the speed at which let's see I that's the part I don't like either she she likes to she gets her little claws stuck in the um, screening sometimes I mean they don't get stuck to the point where she can't get them out but you could see how they eat she does this all the time she sways back and forth and I think that in in the wild would mimic you know a, a twig or a leaf blowing in the wind and that's kind of like uh, a camouflage aspect for them so that predators aren't going to attack them while they're eating and they're not paying attention now you could see you know her wings back here I'll kind of turn her. You can see how long bodied she got. I mean, honestly, she doesn't go anywhere except for where she's at. She doesn't move around the enclosure at all. Neither does he. Um, they just kind of stay upside down on the lids and. It, it was funny because when she molted last time, you know, the molt was over here and she was over here and it, 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 they were facing the same exact way. It's almost like they were a mirror image of each other except for the molt was brown and translucent and she was bright green and had wings now, you know. So, I mean, she, she really took off quick um, as far as her growth. I try to feed these guys, you know, once every three or four days. I don't give them anything big. I don't feed them crickets. It's mainly... Uh, mealworms or waxworms. Um, we're going to try roaches next time if I can get them in the tongs to, to feed them. I don't want to just put it in the enclosure and have the have it run around because they may not, they just may not grab it. Although that's what I did with the, uh, see with the Chinese man, it says before I, I knew that you couldn't feed them crickets or shouldn't feed them crickets. I was feeding that Chinese man as crickets all the time. And um, she would, I put a couple in there and she would grab me, eat one, and then grab the other one, eat the other one. So I'm sure that they would actually hunt the cricket in here. But So, yeah, okay, so that's today's morning feeding video. Uh, I think we got everybody to eat except for the male Metallica, right? Now, he didn't really want to have anything to do. Oh, and, and both of the Reduncus didn't want to eat either. I'm going to leave them videos in just because there was some stuff that I talked about that I think is relevant information so uh, uh, thanks for watching this one and uh, we'll see you guys later on tonight with another one uh, hopefully uh, at least the rehoming of Obi if I don't get an opportunity to do another feeding video today uh, I hope to but I may end up just feeding them off camera to get it through because I do need to feed those little baby praying mantises again um, somebody asked me to do a feeding video with them and it's next to near impossible with the setup that I have they are so quick um, I said this before they are they want to come out of their cups faster than spiders do um, I, I, you don't know how many of them I've had to chase around here you know that they jumped to the floor they jumped on you know the, the table where I'm at trying to get them corralled back into their enclosure all the same time trying to keep the you know little flightless fruit flies in the cup and the ones that were refrigerated you know try to keep them dormant enough that they're not all trying to climb out of the cup, cup at the same time because what I do is I put a bunch of um, fruit flies into a deli cup put the deli cup in the refrigerator and I let it sit in there for about 20 minutes and then I they, they go dormant so then I slide those all into a little tiny you know one of these little pill vials and then I feed off the pill vials uh, that seems to be the easiest way for me to work it and I try to do it like a um, manufacturing facility I'll, I'll open all the enclosure lids just pop them and let them sit on top of the actual enclosure and then I fly as fast as I can I put a fly in close it put a fly in close it and then you have that one random rogue one that decides that it wants to come out you know then you're chasing the baby praying mantis around so it's, it's not anything that I can do yet. Maybe when they get to uh, the next um, instar stage, um, maybe I might be able to 
uh, film a couple of them. Uh, they are so small too, so the camera has a hard time picking them up as well. So I do have footage of one of them eating. Uh, it'll be in the quick hits video at the end of the month. Um, it wasn't catching the fly, but actually eating the fly. Um, and, and once I got one that was eating it, of course, once they start eating, they, they're just like this. They, they don't really go anywhere. But they will do that sway um, back and forth while they eat too. So it's pretty cool to watch it. So, okay, again, thanks for watching. We're, we're at 300, right, 388 subscribers um, for so far. This year, it, it's actually, you know, because I just started really doing the, the videos in February. Uh, I put a lot of them out. There's a ton of them, ton of them, ton of them. Um, and I never categorized them because I wasn't really, you know, I, I just want to get videos out and get my footing and, and you know, learn how to do these uh, properly. So I'm hoping to redo the, 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 the YouTube page and, and get the videos categorized into, like, you know, uh, Updates as, as, as a category, feeding videos as a category, sling feeding as a category, um, you know, hot topics as a category. Then you could actually go to the page and then just go into that category if you want to see, you know, a hot topic or something I talked about before or, you know, like the video with the um, Facebook groups would be in that kind of a category. If I can get all that stuff separated over the course of January while I'm home, um, I could do that on the computer. Um, That'll make that easier for you guys to go back through and look at older videos. Because um, there are some, some pretty good feeding videos I did early in the year. But I'd, I'd really like to see a possible try and get the 400 subscribers before the end of 2017. Um, you know, I see some people that have 14,000 subscribers and I just scratch my head. I, I don't understand it. But... You know, that, that's how it goes. I know a lot of people keep saying I should have a lot more subscribers than I do, and I don't know if I'm not tagging uh, correctly so that when people do searches, they're not finding stuff or finding me. Um, but if you have anybody who watches YouTube videos, you know, say, hey, check this guy out. I'd like to get the 400. And, uh, again, if I have slings sometime next year, we're going to do a couple giveaways. So hopefully that will work out for us. It didn't work out like I wanted to this year. But uh, we'll try something next year. Um, I should have chromatis slings, uh, versicolor slings, hopefully calcote slings, and um, uh, hopefully Davis Penelorus slings. They seem to be the next ones that would probably be lined up and the Fonopelma hensi. So there's going to be some, some stuff that I'll be able to give away next year. And uh, well, we're going to have some fun. I hope to have fun. You know, if you guys have some ideas of some things you want to see, let me know. Um, don't expect to see me on camera. I, I just don't feel that that's right for this channel. Um, you know, I, I don't do vlogs. I don't need to be in front of the camera. You know, if it gets to a point where maybe Tom Moran or or Mike Farlish or somebody wants to do a collaboration video, maybe I'll put myself in front of the camera for that. But other than that, what you're going to see the collection because that's what this channel is about. It's not about seeing me. You know, it's not about knowing what I'm doing all day long or, you know, trying to put out 150 videos you know, in, in a three, four week span, just so I can get as many views as I can, because, you know, if the more views I would get, if you have the advertising part on, you know, you would get paid. And, and I'm seeing that a little bit more out of some of the tarantula uh, YouTubers. And I don't know, I, I mean, I know why they do it. And money's a big driving factor, but it just, to me, it just doesn't seem um, like this, what this channel should be about. So I hope I didn't ramble too much there at the end and talk about some stupid stuff that kind of lost you guys. But uh, thanks again. Um, I'm trying to get to everybody's comments. I read everybody's comments from the video yesterday. Um, they're, they're greatly appreciated. I'll try to respond to them sometime today. Um, again, I'm trying to get these spiders fed, finish this Christmas shopping. And um, maybe tonight when I, when I settle down a little bit, um, I'll try to respond to everybody's comments on the last few videos. And uh, again, I'd love to hear questions or comments or, you know, suggestions. Uh, any kind of suggestions would, would be great. Um, I did the tour video, so you'll see, you could go back to that and see what I have in my collection. If there's something that you want to see a little bit more of or you want to lo learn a little bit more about, and you want me to feature that tarantula or that genus or something, 
um, let me know. Uh, I know that Boxing Bowl wanted me to do a, 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 a video on sete hair, but until I can get the right programming, uh, the, right, the right software to be able to do what I want to do with it, me sitting here explaining it really isn't going to help much. So, um, hopefully next year, Boxing Boa will get that video done. Uh, if not, maybe I'll hand it over to uh, Mike Farless because he would probably be a good one to do a video on that. Uh, he's he's got some good software and he'd be able to put something, piece something together pretty good. And maybe I can do an appearance in the video or something. Um, we'll we'll see. I'll talk to him and see what what he thinks, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Have a great Friday, um, and we'll talk to you guys soon.